Last time, I knit my own version of the infamous blue sweater from The Devil Wears Prada, which was technically my most complex cable sweater to date, but then I realised it was autumn, aka fall, aka the season of pumpkin appropriation, cosy movies, and cable sweaters. So I saw my comedy with a rom-com and raised myself a murder mystery. Few can deny the power Harry Burns' marshmallowy mock neck sweater had in making not feeling well a desirable aesthetic. However, exactly three decades later, a new sweater came onto the scene. And that sweater was Ransom Drysdale's dishevelled eggshell crew neck, and the hype was on an entirely different scale altogether. Wait. Can we just take a moment to talk about how the last sweater I knit was also in this movie, and how it looks a lot more like this one than the one it was supposed to? Anyway, both of these sweaters are fisherman sweaters, and both movies were set in the fall, so I was going to Frankenstein myself the ultimate fall sweater by combining the soft, retro silhouette of Harry's with the colour and cable pattern of Ransom's. Are you telling me that shipping means something completely different? Again, I chose to use an Aaron Waite wool, which was no doubt substantially heavier than the one Captain America wore, but probably not too dissimilar to the one worn by Mike Wazowski. This meant that I had no idea how the cable pattern would drape, so there was a real chance that I wouldn't actually end up with the silhouette I was basing this project on. Needless to say, I was looking forward to finding out. First, it was crucial to identify and then decipher the cable patterns. As someone who has only ever stuck to a handful of cables because I've always avoided projects just like this one, the task at hand was silently overwhelming, and there was definitely some hesitation. But we love a challenge on this channel, so let's go through it together. I just sat on my needle. So Ransom's sweater has three main types of cables, the first being a lattice that centres both the body panels and the sleeves. The lattice is then accompanied by single knit columns with mirroring rope cables on either side. These are then followed by four stranded braids. The ropes and braids are then alternated with each other until reaching the panel edges. This probably won't surprise you at all, but it's my first time cabling lattices or braids, and as always, I won't be following a pattern. But I realise that I'm super off the braid. I can see that I'm actually supposed to have some pearl stitches in between. It's more of like a sort of Celtic braid, I'm gonna have to figure that one out. So I finally figured out the braid. There was a bit of trial and error involved, because with this cable, this part was supposed to be underneath this part, but I fixed that later on, so I'm going to use this one. Again, I was starting with a sleeve, simply because it's a smaller version of the body, and to top that, I was also knitting in the round, because the mere thought of having to stitch two extra seams was just too much. All of this is to say that strategic self-preservation is paramount when starting a patternless project of this magnitude. Unsurprisingly, everything looked a little larger than intended, so I decided to remove a braid from the round. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm not going to regret that at all. I just continue the sample to try and figure out how to do the lattice. So far, I've figured out how the stitches are made, and it's basically just cabling with single stitches. But what I think I've done wrong here is that I've made the gap between the stockinette stitches too wide, which means that they end up being longer as well. Other than that, I think I'm on the right track, so fingers crossed it shouldn't be too difficult. Of course, cables are everywhere, and I could likely find a pattern for it, but like learning to play piano by ear, I really wanted to use this opportunity to solidify my understanding of cables cables by sight, and there was a strong possibility I might have bitten off more than I could chew. And I'd just like to add that judging from the collar leading into the front panel, these pearl columns were apparently only one stitch wide on one side, but two on the other? Huh. In the end, I decided to go with single stitch columns because my two stitch columns just didn't look right. This is because although Ransom's sweater appeared to have some significant gaps between the cables, the weight of the sweater itself may have also contributed to them. I also decided to mirror the braids, even though the original braids were the same throughout. Sure, this was technically less accurate, but I just couldn't help myself. To be honest, starting a sleeve on this project was still daunting, and although I'd already proven to myself that I could do everything technically, the fact that this was my most complex cable project to date was still a truth I was unable to escape. But lo and behold, it was going pretty smoothly, although if this channel has taught me anything, it's to never get too comfortable. 
So I finally came across my first cable mistake, and what I did was I crossed this strand over this strand, when it should have been this strand going over this strand. So what I've done is I've taken the yarn out from two rows. It shouldn't be that difficult, I think it's just, I haven't done this before, so I have to think about it. Okay, so if I, mm, yeah, so if I take these two stitches and knit them first, and re-loop them, then they should be over. After this first mistake, I became a little too conscious of making another and not spotting it, so I even tried correcting a mistake that wasn't actually there. Anyway, as I knit further, I started to notice how much the tension from the cables had compacted and shrunk the initial circumference of the round, so it was pretty clear by now that increases were unavoidable. Sure, I thought that maybe I should have stuck with the two stitch pearl columns, but that's what the mental in compartmentalizing is for. My mental well-being. So like I did with my Andy Sachs sweater, I started to gradually increase at either side of the round with make one increases. The plan was to increase enough to fit two mirroring rope cables because it looked as though that was the case for the original sweater, and I toiled through the night, incorporating my increases until I got a good sense of what they looked like. I hate it. Like I said, I hated it. How did I come to this conclusion? Well, I had just spent the last few cable repeats trying to convince myself that I didn't. Looking at it was like reading a book, when all of a sudden you realise that someone ripped out the pages just when things were getting good. In relatively mainstream gaming jargon, I had seriously levelled up my XP, but in doing so, my health bar had been completely obliterated. It was game over, with zero checkpoints or saves. This time, I was going to see if I could skip the increases altogether and reconcile with my initial two-stitch pearl columns to separate the cables more clearly. You just really can't see enough of a separation between the columns, which at this point I don't think I can continue, but it is like really thick. Like super thick. So I've basically combined a very structured cable pattern, several very structured cable patterns, with a very thick yarn, so yeah, pretty obvious it was going to happen. <laughs> Trust me, I thought about it, but I didn't think blocking would be able to solve the closest of the stitches, at least not with a combination of this yarn, and my knitting style. And yes, I did feel betrayed by my earlier sampling. Long story short, sampling is overrated. Changed my mind. And this is my progress so far with the two stitch pearl columns, and it was looking and feeling a lot better. But I had a mistake to fix. That may seem like a bad thing, but surprisingly, it was kind of a good thing. A good thing in the sense that my mistakes were now coming from, admittedly, a place of complacency instead of a lack of familiarity. In other words, my brain was focusing on other things, and a small mistake was a small price to pay for multitasking superpowers. And things were pretty repetitive from there onwards. Knit some more, cable some more, make a mistake, knit some more, cable some more, realise mistake, frog because it's the only reasonable plot of action, pick up the entire round, realise you didn't frog enough, frog some more, pick up round again, finally fix mistake, knit some more, and then cable some more. I think you get the gist, the only thing now was to see if I needed any increases. With New Year's resolutions not too far around the corner, I decided to sample them and the first one was much better than the previous. I think it's a lot better. I hope it doesn't increase by too much too quickly. That's why I initially staggered these. However, before putting them into the actual sleeve, the muse bonked me over the head with a tiny sledgehammer and told me to make the increases from the center instead of the outer edges. The road was finally looking a little less rocky until it began to crumble beneath my very feet before collapsing into a giant sinkhole. Okay, maybe a medium-sized one at best. I realise I'm still on the sleeve, so since I've already covered the sampling process, basic techniques, and so much more, I'll see you on the other side. Here's where I decided to stop, and I hadn't cast off yet because I wasn't sure how long they were supposed to be. If anything, I had a feeling that they were too long. Moving on to the main body, it was time to cast on again, and I was still mourning the loss of my wooden needle. Excuse me? What is this? The most buttery knitting experience ever? I'll be the first to tell you, it doesn't look great, but this might just be what knitting with clouds feels like. 
It was a perfect combination of slip and grip, bang in the middle of the banana peel to velcro spectrum. So what are you waiting for? Okay, the novelty eventually wore off, and the weird imbalance of knitting with one long needle and an even longer pointy noodle was becoming irksome. But honestly, if I had the same needle type and the same materials, then I probably would have continued. Dare I say it, things were going well. And that was until the rug was pulled from under my feet. This is definitely becoming a theme. It could be worse, but it wasn't getting worse, so it was technically THE worst. Plus, lest we forget, there were still plenty of projects left for it to get worse -er. The logic and grammar totally make sense if you want them to. How badly I screwed up can be determined by whether or not I needed to frog entire rows, or if I could fix things with a crochet hook. So yeah, it was an unraveling moment in at least two ways. A few more hours later, and here was my progress so far. Okay, so now I need to just work up until the neckline and then start casting off, and then I'll do one shoulder or one half the neckline before doing the other one. So far, I think the tension is a bit too much. With everything put together, it might just stretch out, but currently as it is as a panel, it's a little bit too close-knit, and yeah, no pun intended. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. It is a lot heavier than I ever expected it to be. Um, and still pretty dense, even though I added the two-stitch columns in between each cable, but that could just be because I'm using a much thicker yarn than the original. It's also very nice and quilted feeling, and I kind of want to eat it, but let's not do that. In case you were curious, I used the magic knot to tie the yarn ends together, and it's currently my favourite method, although I still haven't plucked up the courage to trim the ends yet. Seeing as the cables had such a big appetite, I was a little concerned about running out of yarn. Actually, I was pretty worried about it, because at best, I would probably just about make it by the skin of my teeth, and for a moment, I stopped dead in my tracks, because going too far at this point would lead to dire consequences. I then began to consider every option I could think of, every method I could possibly implement. Eventually, I landed on a process of elimination, which meant knitting the waistband first, as it was the biggest unknown. Needless to say, it was such a terrible idea that I gave up on it soon after realising that it was the precise reason I hadn't picked my project back up again. In the end, I went back to the numbers and made some measurements and tension calculations. After a few more rows, it was time to cast off for the neckline, and although I was still worried it was a little short, choices had been made. To do this, I just stared repeatedly at a reference image for Ransom Sweater until I got as close to it as I could, and as mentioned previously, I was then going to mirror one side onto the other. But then this happened. I was actually supposed to do this cable here, but not this cable. Okay, now I can start casting off again. It looks longer than I thought it would be, which is great, and it's draping pretty well, so I'm not too mad at it so far. I kind of overcompensated. Suffice it to say, we got there in the end, and it was time to do it all over again, for the back panel this time. Well, actually, it wasn't that simple. I ended up remaking the same mistake on the back panel in an oddly similar place as the front side, but this time I managed to fix it without unravelling. So take that, mundane twist of fate. Progress from then on was pretty consistent, with a few quickly caught mistakes here and there, and I was rapidly approaching the neckline. But alas, I may as well have been knitting in the abyss, because I soon discovered some major miscalculations in my neckline. I made a counting mistake on this side, which meant that I also made a mistake on this side, except I made an extra mistake on this side, which means that I've technically only made one mistake on this side, but really I've made two. Oh, I'm so confused. I decided to go with my first mistake, and I replicated that twice on my back panel, which means that I have to redo this side. Worth redoing? Probably not, because can you even tell the difference? <laughs> I then placed the front and back panels right sides together before slip stitching the shoulder seams with a crochet hook. If you'd like a more in-depth explanation, you can watch my previous cable sweater video here. 
Okay, so now it's time to do the collar. The collar was simple enough, I just made decreases on the same size as the shoulder seams until I got a tapered mock neckline. In case you were wondering, it's basically a folded over collar that's longer than a crew neck but shorter than a turtleneck. And it was looking pretty good, and honestly a lot better than I thought it would at this point. Once I reached the folding point, all I had to do was reverse the pattern with increases instead of decreases. And so I began, until I realised I made my last set of decreases around later than I should have. Like, come on, are you kidding me? In my defense, I was marathoning a thriller with a disappointingly anticlimactic conclusion. Worth it. So of course, there was no other option. I mean, we're here for a long time, not a good time, right? Soon enough, I was faced with a science one may refer to as a Sloan Ranger Christmas. If you thought the collar was a palaver, then allow me to introduce you to the pavlova eaten mess that was knitting it into the neckline. And Mount Foreverist had finally been surmounted at last. Did it also remind me of the top of a tube of toothpaste? Toothily. Forget dessert, it was time to make some noodles, aka fixing the sleeve I didn't quite finish. Next, it was time to figure out the cuffs. The only thing to make sure of was that I cast on fewer stitches than the sleeve in order to get that gathered effect. But if you think for one second that it was all well and done with, then you must be new here. Turns out I had the wrong stitch count down and ended up redoing it. This unravelling of my previous sleeve attempt is symbolic of my dwindling energy, my withering soul, and ultimately the passing of the very season this sweater was meant for. I have just discovered a mistake, my sleeves aren't matching at the top. So on the first sleeve you can see that the lattice crosses over before I cast off, but on this one they still haven't crossed over yet. So... I think that I added an extra row here. <laughs> It does look slightly longer than the other repetitions of the pattern, so I'm going to have to unravel up until there, try and find out where I went wrong, and do it all over again. Wish me luck. So it turned out that this extra row was only half the battle, and I kind of guessed as much. There was still a missing cable round on one side, but I couldn't for the life of me figure out where it was, or rather, wasn't. There was still so much left to do, and I wasn't going to spend one second longer searching for it. It'll have to do. Finally, onto the waistband and it was the most straightforward element of the entire sweater. I'm very tired. One thing I have to say though is I think the collar is way too big. I tried it on and my neck looks like spaghetti in this. Although on the stand it looks like the right fit, I think I'm just gonna have to redo it. Why didn't I just make the neckline smaller? Well, I was going off a of ransom sweater pattern with a heavier yarn and I chose accuracy over common sense. I'm already regretting this. There's just something about things going awry as the sun sets. I added more increases to the sides of the collar and it's looking like it's fitting a lot better. For the seams, I decided to bring back my old favourite, the mattress stitch, and it was a much needed positive outcome to prepare me for what was to come. And I basically did one stitch per row. What I did with the next one is this. I've only set in half of it so far, which is why it looks a bit funny still. But I basically stitched one stitch for every two rows. And you can see the cable pattern more clearly as well. So I think I'm going to stick with this one. Side seam wise, everything's pretty good actually. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Which you can see here. Now I just need to fix everything else. Um, this is a disaster. Actually, I really like it on the back. It's just such a shame this is what it looks like at the front. I was tired. Sick and tired. And I couldn't help but think about all the things I could have done differently had I known where I'd be right now if I didn't. Of course, you could argue that I've technically finished the sweater, and that's an accomplishment in and of itself. But in my eyes, it was hideous. And in no universe would I ever choose to wear it. That was until I ripped out the sleeves and did them all over again. Okay, I should have just stuck with the first method. So yeah, I did um, one stitch per row, which is probably explaining the puckering because again, like each row is slightly shorter than each stitch is wide. And before I knew it, it was all over. Okay, it took some time to get rid of the bad taste, left behind by the latter part of the process. But after walking away from the finished sweater for a few days, 
I could finally see it for what it was. The sweater is soft, marshmallowy, and the perfect off-white for cosy fireplace posing. It also turned out to be the length I wanted all along, and the silhouette combined with the plush cable patterns gives it that nostalgic je ne sais quoi. Okay, enough of the drivel. It's the autumn of 2022, and I finally faced my multi-cable knit sweater fears. 